of love. But uh, yeah, um, Colin, thank you so much for coming on. I've got you on for uh, linoleum. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sure we'll share some camaraderie because we are both from the Midwest, but I'll get into that a little later. All right, yes. <laughs> um, it's actually something I found out in my research. Um, so linoleum, for those who don't know it, um, it had its world premiere, gosh, time is a construct, what, two <laughs> days ago? It's especially uh, a construct in this film, yes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, it, it's this sci-fi dramedy, a bunch of different things. Um, I think to define it by one thing would be kind of erroneous. Um, but um, so linoleum, that's a very unique title. Where did that come from? Because I think linoleum and I think, oh, linoleum tile. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, it's, it's funny you bring that up because I, uh, I agree. I also think linoleum tile, um, but uh, it was, it's born sort of thematically out of this, this simple idea that um, uh, I, the film itself too is, is doing this, but it's essentially examining and looking for the fantastic within the everyday. And I think that the linoleum flooring um, is uh, linoleum is a thing that I think brings up a lot of nostalgia for in people's minds. Um, it's very uh, you know present in places like schools or hospitals or offices and things. Um, these kind of major places in our lives where we make most of our memories. Um, it's this kind of omnipresent material, and uh, you know I wanted to um, uh, kind of thread that throughout the whole story. And so actually my production production designer, Molly Wartell and I uh, used the same linoleum flooring on all of our sets that we possibly could. So it's it's in the basement, it's in the school, it's at the lab, it's in the, you know, it's all throughout the story. Um, and it doesn't hurt too that uh, that linoleum itself sort of looks like the cosmos. It's this kind of like speckled, um, you know, sort of design uh, that may kind of lead into that aspect as well, so. That was a better answer than I could have ever hoped for. <laughs> um, I did not think um, that it looked like the cosmos, but hey, um, that that's. I, I don't think I ever spend so much time looking at linoleum. <laughs> you, know, you know, I think that looks like the cosmos. Right, right. Um, yeah. But, um, but no. Um, so. This is your second film based in the Midwest. Uh, Double Rock Walker, apparently I can't speak today, um, was, I, I, I forget where that was set in, but that came out last year. Yes. Um, this is set in Ohio. So do you just have, like, a, a thing for celebrating Midwest culture? and? I, I do, Austin. I mean, I think it's a part of me. I was born and raised in Ohio and uh, in Columbus, uh, and I... I, I'm also a kind of very nostalgic person. So I always love going back to Ohio. I love the feeling, the smells of Ohio. I'm, I'm kind of an Ohio boy, you know? And so I think, um, it always works its way into my movies, this kind of idea of the Midwest being kind of average or normal or so forth and, and kind of, um, you know, bringing out what's not so normal about the Midwest or kind of bringing a kind of surreal aspect to how normal or how average it actually is. And this kind of Stepford Wives quality to, to these places in the Midwest. Um, and even, you know, in, in Columbus, uh, I'm from the suburbs of, Col of, of Columbus. And, uh, you know, it's just <laughs> Ohio, actually, Columbus, Ohio is a place that, um, that national brands will test things like places like McDonald's will test their new you know, whatever bacon, cheeseburger or something or other um, in Columbus, because um, if it works in Columbus, it's going to work in the, the whole country because it's such an average <laughs> place. So um, kind of leaning into that, you know, in, in my films is something I'm, I'm, I'm interested in. I'm, I'm proud of, you know, I'm proud of where I come from. I think a lot of people think that, you know, a place like Ohio is, is boring or whatever, but it has its own culture, you know, and it's something that is important to me. And so, um, yes, yeah, Double Walker is set in Ohio, Linoleum is set in Ohio. Um, and there's uh, actually a little fun tidbit is um, 
they both are sort of set in the same community um, in this oh, kind of like uh, in this my own kind of global, you know, my own, I guess, sort of mind universe. Uh, but they have, uh, yeah, there's some tidbits that kind of overlap in the films, even though they are starkly different. Um, Double yeah. Walker is kind of a ghost story um, and uh, and is very art sort of art house and wandering and half the movies b-roll and so forth like it's a very art film and then this one is um you know much more composed in a lot of ways so. yeah and you know i uh i don't think you got an open there i don't i don't think i don't think that's in the script but um yeah. but but uh but yeah we uh coming i come from missouri so yeah um and we uh we're called i'm i'm sure ohio is called this too but we're called a flyover state right, right. um or farmland or something like that or yeah the heartland the heartland like the heartland Ugh. um but like it's this interesting thing because it's the midwest isn't really that well represented in film other than like oh hey look there's a farm Let's go right. visit the the scary farm and the horror film. Right, I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I it's funny too because Jim Gaffigan, uh, who is the lead in the film, is also from the Midwest. He's from Indianapolis, and so he also came in with his own sort of ideas about the Midwest, which I really liked. I mean, he he just sort of knew the world, you know. And you know, we shot we actually shot the film in upstate New York, um, uh, which we made to look like Ohio, but we deliberately shot in October, late October, uh, to get the fall colors. And so the whole thing is happening in this like fall season, which again has this own sort of nostalgic, like of all the seasons, I feel like fall is the one that kind of has its own kind of personality and smell to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and so leaning into that, that aspect, and I was really excited to sort of like, you know, cause I live in Los Angeles and um, you know, there are no seasons there and I miss the season. I've been in LA for like maybe almost 10 years now. and. And that kind of uh, that those kind of shifts of time, you know, just don't exist out in Los Angeles. And I'm, I, I love sort of uh, playing in the in the sandbox of the Midwest because I think there's um, so much to draw from. And I don't think it's, it's sort of an untapped, you know, universe uh, on itself, you know. So I'm 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 happy that you I'm I'm happy we're riffing about the Midwest. This is good. This is not expected, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you you don't miss fake fall or fake spring, right? Or the, um, or the uh, fall that turns into winter almost immediately, but then goes back to spring and then goes to winter. Right, um, right, right. Um, like, I think yesterday it was like 15 here, and it was like, oh, that's fun. And now today it's like 16. Like, right, right. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, but uh, getting to the film and not just talking about the Midwest, because I think we could be here probably two hours talking about the Midwest and all yes. of its jankiness sometimes. Um, we could even talk about MCI. Um, <laughs> but um, so um, what would, what would um, this is qu quite a bigger film uh, than Double Walker. So all-star cast. So what was it like directing um, Jim and Ray? Uh, Jim and Ray were incredible to work with, both of them. Um, and they were both also so different to work with. I mean, Ray has been working in film and television, you know, for 25 years, something like that. And, and has so, she's just so, like, she just lives in that world. Jim is obviously an entertainer, uh, you know, a stand-up comedian. He's so comfortable in front of the camera. Um, he has less sort of like experience as far as like the narrative side of things goes than somebody like Ray. But at the same time, like um, he came with so many great ideas and he's such a natural, um, you know, he plays two characters in the movie, which is also, you know, its own challenge in and of itself. But they also got along so well, like, what, what, you know, their dynamic on screen, obviously they have this sort of uh, turmoil, like, you know, this tumultuous relationship on screen. But behind the scenes, they were the goofiest, you know, people, Jim was doing stand up between takes and Ray, Ray makes everybody laugh. She was, you know, dancing with the crew after we'd wrapped and so forth, you know, so um, she's such a good sport and such a good energy to have on set. And, and, uh, you know, the kind of talent that they bring. Um, I like to consider my actors as the department heads of their characters. And, um, you know, 
Jim and Ray came with such brilliant ideas um, that went just way beyond me. And I wrote the movie, you know, and I thought I knew these characters and they come at it with such an analytical, you know, brain and, and they're so sort of, um, you know, used to sort of character development. And um, I just learned so much from them throughout the whole process. And it was really a joy. I mean, you know, being able to just talk to them on a daily basis, uh, I learned so much uh, again. And so, yeah, it was, it was a joy. I, I, and, but obviously in my first movie, you know, working with less experienced, but still fantastic people, it was just sort of different. You know, it wasn't necessarily better or worse. It was just a kind of different way of working, you know, um, but I enjoyed them both. So. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, it, for, I, I believe this is your second film. Um, correct right. me if I'm wrong, because I got something so wrong on the Halo day yesterday. I was like, ah, oh, why did you get that wrong? <laughs> like, I, I mixed up um, Bokeem Woodbine with um, Michael Coulter. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that happens. It happens. Okay, so I'm not insane <laughs> on that. Okay. Like, they'd done Halo Nightfall before, but anyways. Um, I was like, I was like, how did I get that wrong? I watched Halo Nightfall. Um, <laughs> But um, but it's been like what six years? Anyways, enough yeah. about Halo. Um, but um, it's obviously the film has obviously had a huge response out of South by Southwest. Even people who I wouldn't expect to see it, they're like, yeah, I, it's like my favorite film of the festival, along with um, uh, another. No, not that's not Jim Gaffigan. That's Patton Oswalt. I almost did it again. Um, it, it's a uh, I love my dad. It's I love the other my one dad. That's get, yeah, yeah, that's getting a big uh, response um, out of out of it. So, how how has that been for you? It's been really great and exciting. I mean, I haven't really, honestly, looked at the reviews and stuff so much. I've I've been running around busy and trying to see other movies, and um, you know, we've had a bunch of screenings so far of our films too, and or our film. Um, but yeah, I mean. It's great also to sort of see these other films coming out of the festival as well. Like, I love my dad, um, James, who's the director of the film. I've, I've, we met here and we've been talking. We had lunch together. Like, you know, it's, it's great that, like, to build this community at South by Southwest where um, these filmmakers can come together. And, you know, I'm, our film is in competition and there's eight films in competition. So is I Love My Dad. And there's other wonderful films in competition. We all have met each other and we're all sort of, like, hanging out and, you know, it's not really even a competition. It's really just like a way in which we're all kind of coming together, which is such a, a nice feeling, especially after the whole pandemic. And obviously we're still in it a little bit, but, um, you know, to kind of come out of the weeds and be able to meet such amazing people and see such amazing films and, you know, seemingly getting a great response from our film um, is, 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 is exciting. You know, for me, it's just about, you know, we as filmmakers really want, um, you know, we want eyeballs. We want people to see the movie. And so, you know, having to wait seven years from the initial, you know, conception of the script until now. Um, I'm just excited to get it out there and have people like you see them to have anybody see it. You know, it's like, finally, here we go. So I'm happy about it for sure. Yeah. And I mean, you kind of get that response from screenings where you're sitting in the audience and you're like, okay, did, did they react to this joke or did they not <laughs> react? Right. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday, um, and I was like, you know, I, it's good to have physical again, um, even mm -hmm. though I can't be there. Um, it's such a different thing when you get a physical response because um, the most recent example for it would be Spider-Man No Way Home, mm -hmm. where you get that huge theatrical response when, spoiler, right. was it, um, when X thing happens that I won't spoil. <laughs> um but um but yeah it's just it, it's an interesting thing and i want to ask a unique question that i've not asked anyone else okay um what films out of the fest have you loved well i i can tell you some that i'm very excited about um that i haven't actually even seen yet but i i i because I haven't seen enough to say, like, to, to answer that question in a way that feels like it, like I deserve to answer that question. Because, like, sure. I've been, so the first two days of the festival, this is the third day of the festival, the first two days, 
we've had a lot of screenings. And so I haven't been able to see as many that I'd want to. But um, I will say the ones that I'm very excited about uh, are my sort of fellow competition films, um, including uh, Seriously Red is one that I'm very excited about. And um, yeah, I love my dad, which is another one that I think uh, is, I'm just genuinely pumped to see that again, like after talking to James so much, like I feel like I know the whole movie, but I haven't even seen it yet. Um, and uh, of course the Daniels film, Everything Everywhere All at Once seems really exciting as well. But um, yeah. I was so bummed when like, I talked to the PR people and they're like, yeah, no screeners. I'm like, uh, no, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. I'll cover only a twenty four movies for a year, <laughs> um, but nice. um, but no, um, um, but um, back to the film. Um, let's see, um, like usually going into a second film, somebody learns um, things that worked and didn't work. So from Double Walker. Uh, what did you learn from that film that you were like, okay, maybe this doesn't work for this for my next film. Let's retool it a little bit. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I think that honestly, Austin, I think there were far fewer things that I felt like I was like, oh, this didn't work. I'm not going to do that versus, oh, this worked. Oh, that's interesting. I want to try that in the next movie. You know, um, I, we were, we were actually greenlit for, um, for linoleum before i started shooting double walker so i knew linoleum was coming and i decided because it was set we were set to shoot like eight months out for linoleum i was like man well, what am i gonna do just sit around for eight months and i just decided to put together this little film real quick and shoot it before that and um i think you know even that that first movie was it barely even had a script i mean it was really more like a 50 page like novella um, that me and my uh, 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 co co writer and producer and the star of the film Sylvie Mix sort of wrote together, and so it was a very organic movie, a very flowing movie. And um, what I learned there was actually, you know, there's a scene in Linoleum that is very fluid and organic, and it's the it's the train scene with the kids, and um, you know. That, that was very much the way in which we approached Double Walker was the way in which we shot that train scene. And so um, I think I wanted to kind of bring in some of those aspects from the way in which I shot the first one into the second one. So I think it was less about what I wanted to stay away from and more about embracing the good things from the first movie and putting them into the second. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, it's interesting. And, and I kind of wondered um, if when um, I, when I was looking at the two release dates, I was like, you know, I don't think somebody could shoot these th these two films back to back. Um, but um, be just because of how the timeline would work. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, even if you've got a, what, 90-day shoot, I mean, you're still post-production... Um, yeah. mixing everything that goes along with that so yeah i mean schedule wise we the double walker was a 17 day shoot and we um we wrapped about six months before we started shooting double walker which meant that we finished the edit on double walker literally like like we we finished the edit and sound and made the dcp and printed it two days before I left to go to New York to shoot Linoleum. So literally it was like from one movie right into the next movie uh, without any break. Well, one day of break, I guess. But, um, but literally it was back to back. And, and uh, I think it helped because I was already in the flow. Like when Double Walker was happening, like, you know, like I was kind of getting the kinks out of my own process. You know, it was my first feature. I kind of got the butterflies out on that. And so going into the next one, I think I was far more confident. You know, and um, but yeah, they were very much back to back uh, in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, it, it's been fun to see the trajectory of both films, you know, Double Walker being in a very tiny, intimate, you know, sort of slow burn of a movie. And then this one, which, you know, has kind of more of a, a backing, you know, uh, going into it. So, yeah. Yeah. And I guess um, the, the biggest question of all, if, 
if, if somebody hasn't seen Linoleum yet, uh, as of recording, there's still seven more days in South by no, not seven days, six days now um, of South by Southwest. Um, so, oh, if anyone's on the fence for this movie, what would you like to say to get them buy the single? Uh, I, I, can you buy single tickets? I don't think so. I don't think you can buy single tickets, but if you've got a badge, you can get that express pass if you want. Um, yeah. Yeah, so if any, anyone's got a badge. Yeah, sure. What would you have to... I guess I would tell... I would... I would say that um, South by Southwest is a crazy atmosphere. There's parties everywhere. Like, I can hear a band off playing over here, and there's one over this way. Like, it's um, just a wild place to be, and there's so much chaos and so much sort of um, going on uh, that I do actually think that linoleum can be a kind of safe haven for yourself to sort of be present and um, slow down a second um, and uh, sort of examine your own kind of, uh, I don't know what, for back of a better word, like, um, morals or uh you know intuitions through watching this movie and i think that like um you know if somebody's looking to kind of take a break and go to the midwest for two hours where it's you know nice and homey um i would recommend heading to our movie on thursday which is our next screening at the zach theater yeah and you know I, it's funny you talk about parties i literally opened twitter this morning and somebody was talking about like a some kind of party where the, the bartenders just kind of gave up and started placing bottles on VIP tables. Really? Yes. Yeah. Like, like I'll have to send the tweet, but or send, send uh, Eric, uh, yeah. the, your PR person, the tweet, but it's hilarious. Is that about our after party? Was that about our after party or uh, a different party? <laughs> that sounds like know. our after party. <laughs> like, it, it was very vague. Yeah, um, but like it was last night. I know that for sure. Okay, okay, gotcha. That's funny. Um, um, but yeah, um, Colin, thank you so much for coming on. Um, uh, to everyone at home, uh, you could check out South. Uh, you could check out Linoleum at South by Southwest, um, and I'll have a screening links below, as well as a I believe a trailer to the film and any other things you need to know. Um, so yeah, until the next interview, um, thank you so much, Colin, for, um, coming on, and I hope to see you with the third film, or... Great! Yeah, yeah. third film. Yeah, thank you so much, and thanks for the conversation, it was great. Yeah, no problem. Have a great South by. Mm -hmm.